start with Cade, but his brother Chase as well are both apparently in the process of acquiring Mexican citizen citizenship with an eye on possibly representing El Tri at the senior national team level. Ah, another battle for dual nationals. This time, brothers, Herc, something, nothing, or everything. Everything! Watch out! They're coming for your Cades! They're coming for your Chases! Uh, <laughs> seriously? This is, it's, it's not nothing, I'll tell you that much. And it's definitely something because this continues to be a trend, right? Uh, it's a trend in the manner in which FMF, the Federation, is so aggressive in chasing down these dual nationals. That I've personally faulted Greg Berhalter and the U.S. Soccer Federation for when it comes to their recruitment of dual nationals, that is actually one of the biggest strengths, excuse me, strengths that he has and that the Federation has had under his realm. Um, this, I want you to be content, I want you to be happy, I want you to experience both, I want you to come to your own decisions. It's a very nourishing and, and helpful way of allowing the player to gain perspective. So much that even Julian Araujo has, has spoken at length about how good Greg Berhalter has been there. And this doesn't just go to the Mexican-Americans. This goes to Serginho Des, this goes to Gaga Salonina, who's, who's happening to go something uh, through this right now. Uh, but that's not seemed to be the case with FMF and these players. So our colleague Cesar Hernandez, who writes for the website ESPN.com, reported earlier that uh, speaking to just how aggressive FMF is, they're going to host a U.S.-based camp for 18 players this week at the under 15 and under 14 levels. So they are really going in on, on some of those younger players. I'm interested in the points you make about kind of the differences in the approach. There's, there's this idea of the, the predatory call up, right? Where you just basically say, I'm going to call this kid into my program. I'm going to cap tie him. Not necessarily because I know exactly what I'm going to do with him or even if I'm going to use him in the, in the near future, but just so somebody else can't have him. It, it seems like Mexico is a little bit more aggressive on that front. And to your point, Greg Berhalter is a little bit more laid back. When you're ready to commit to us, then you commit to us and we'll go forward. My question to you is, is there really a right or wrong way to do it? I don't know. Um, there's is really there no... such thing in your mind as like a predatory call up? Does, does that word bother you there? It, the word does bother me. Because these are people we're talking about. These are the kids we're talking about. You're asking these kids to make a decision that impacts their lives. You're asking mm. these kids to tell basically millions of people how they identify, and those people run with it. It's a very slippery slope. Uh, I, I'm troubled by not taking these players seriously as people. And I, I don't want to say Greg Berhalter has been lax or, or, or more chill about this. I, I just think he's been more intelligent about this. He's been more respectful, if you will. Um, these are kids, these are people you're dealing with and their families. There is no right or wrong answer of where you go and this is the most important thing here. These kids, no matter what decision they make, they're going to disappoint a sector. They're, they're going to upset people and they're going to have to deal with those, I guess that vitriol, I guess that, I guess that, that hate in a way uh, in some shape or form. So it's a very slippery slope. I do have a problem with the term predatory when, when we're mm. talking about these kids. Just, just thinking about like the, some of the recent names that we've seen in the Mexican-American dual national space, right? If you look at, at the guys who have committed to Mexico, Araujo, Ochoa, Efra, like those guys, Araujo's the lone exception, but even him, it, it took time for him to get, to get minutes, to, to really see what his value would be to the program. If you think about the U.S. side, the one shining example is Ricardo Pepe, and it was like the day he announced, he was not just in the team, he was, he was the U.S. number nine. So you, you see kind of the difference there, right? Yes, uh, in theory, yes. And, and I'm conflicted by this because there are different circumstances, different positions, different kids, different circumstances, different areas of need. Uh, Julian Araujo right now is in a position where maybe out of all of those, he had the biggest chance of playing. And Ricardo Pepe is in a position where he struck lightning. Uh, it was a lightning in a bottle struck at the right time, and look where he is now. He may not be succeeding in terms of productivity, but he's in the Bundesliga. And he went mm. for a $20 million transfer. So you do see like, maybe where one sector or one train of thought is going. But I, I got I to gotta stress this, Seb. These are kids we're dealing with, and, and it's so just it's such a slippery slope with this.